Hello, and uh, here's a quick intro to this episode of the super super divorced, super sleepy, super cast. Um, you get a little uh, discussion about Bender and I going out this evening uh, to uh, watch a uh, concert. Some friends of ours. Rock and roll concert. Yeah. Um, some uh, super scary yep. featuring Jason X. My favorite Jason movie. Just a little bit of... Not a shame. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're loud. Just a little bit of uh, some video game talk, and um, that's about it. As Bender said, it's a super sleepy super cast tonight. We talk about um, Beekman's world for a bit. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And we so. try to figure out why Bill and I is more famous than him. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting discussion. <laughs> yeah. So, um, before we get into the show, uh, make sure that you follow us all across the internet on social media, uh, facebook.com slash super divorce, um, on Instagram at super divorce band, Twitter at super divorce and, uh, Snapchat super divorce. Bender and I are also being quite active on our personal accounts these days yeah you so. can uh you can follow me on instagram at bender butt uh you can follow me on twitter now this is the second cast i've been able to advertise on my twitter but you can follow me at bender if you nasty and uh with the letter u with the letter u yeah bender if letter u nasty uh, and then if you want to follow me on Snapchat, I have been real, really trying to like post a lot on Snapchat. Uh, and my profile picture on Twitter is my snap code. So you can get me on there or search my name. I don't, I still don't really know exactly how Snapchat works. I just take pictures and post them in my story. That's about it. And I'm on Twitter at Nicholas Villars, Instagram at Nicholas Villars, and the same on Snapchat. And I also use my uh, my Snap Pick as my Twitter Pick, so you can find me that way too. Yeah, so we're good to go. And um, SuperDivorceMe.com for all your Super Divorce stuff and email. Email us, uh, divorceclub at superdivorceme.com. If you email us with the subject line, to sweet me, you will be entered in for our weekly drawing to win the Super Divorce Too Sweet Mix. And this week, you actually get to compile yep. that. Volume 2. Volume 2. The two. Bender Mix. Gave out our first one last week, had some great tunes on there, so that's, uh, just something fun that we're going to do and email us one time. You'll be in the running every single week. And if you win, we burn you a CD, a mixed CD like in the old days yeah. and we'll ship it out to you. It's going to be interesting if you guys win my CD because I'm going to put all kinds of stuff on it. I'm not, I saw, I saw your playlist mm -hmm. and uh, it was very in line with the kind of music we're going to be making. Yeah. I think. I just um, kind of started there. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. It's well, just going to be a fun... It'll be a wild card. I mean, some of it, definitely. Yeah. But uh, nice other times... Grab bag. Yeah, it's just going to be like, hey, I'm just going to burn you three cheers for Sweet Revenge. <laughs> Call it a mix CD. <laughs> no, I won't do that. But, uh, yeah. So, you're winning my CD this week. Good luck. All right. Um, oh, and then also, in that email... Uh, divorce club at superdivorceme.com subject line to sweet me and in the body of the message make sure you include your shipping address so that we can ship you the cd if you win it yep free and of charge free of charge totally free all free everything's free just email us yep and uh that's it so enjoy the show yeah bye bye we are not getting a divorce we are not getting a divorce we are not getting a divorce Supercast. I am Nicholas here. Uh, I'm Bender. It's more like the Super Divorce Sleepy Cast. 
Yes, it is the sleepy cat. I, my eyes are very heavy right now. Bender and I just returned back to my home from uh, an evening out. Yep. We went to see a couple bands that uh, uh, we go way back with. Yeah. We, I guess we do now. <laughs> now it, it has been a while. Yeah. But some of our very good friends uh, in Dynamite Thunder Punch and uh, Abertooth Lincoln, some bands that we met right really kind of right after i joined the band within the first couple shows we played uh with once i had joined we we met both of them and we've been playing together ever since so coming up on like four years now probably yeah Yeah. just whenever kind of whenever one of us takes the initiative to set up a show we typically call each other and see Mm -hmm. if we can play so So it was cool to see both of them without, I know you've seen both since uh, the last time we played together, but I've never gone to see both of them without having to play myself. Yeah. So it's cool to just go and hang out. Yeah. Great sets by both bands. Yeah, definitely. They're always, always good. Avertooth is actually releasing a brand new EP tomorrow. Um, well, today when this is well, airing, yeah. it's still... Yeah. Thursday right now. But they were selling the physical copy at the show tonight. They were. So I picked up one of those and like the whole run of their merch table pretty much. Pretty much. Got like one of everything. Yeah. Got their I, their old CD and then I got the vinyl of their last one. So I'm like in that camp with Bender now. Yep. I bought their vinyl a while ago. You can still brag because you got it before I did. Yeah. And uh, and a t-shirt. You got a t-shirt, too. Yeah. Which I don't have, but I'm going to buy tomorrow. Because Abertooth is... Well, tomorrow, today. Yeah. Uh, by the time you're listening to this cast, we will probably be at the Abertooth EP release show. And at said show, I'm going to buy their new CD as well as a t-shirt. Back to back. Yeah. Seeing them back to back nights. It's kind of funny because I don't... Shit, I mean, like can't remember the last time I went to a show when I wasn't playing. It was probably that one out in uh, out in Fairborn where Ba was supposed to meet us. Another Abertooth show. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one at the theater. That yeah. Was the Bernie Sanders thing. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, we, yeah, Ba was supposed to meet us and then bitched out. Like, yeah stupid um but that was like last winter that was forever ago yeah it was probably a year over a year ago now yeah so it had been a while yeah anyway really solid band and uh you should definitely check them out and support them and purchase their new album i already did so i'm not just it comes out digitally tomorrow too so i'm blowing smoke I ain't going to sit here and say, support these guys when I'm not supporting myself, you know? So, we definitely support I support both of those bands heavily. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. It was yeah. good to be out as a band mm-hmm. together. Seeing people. Uh-huh. It's going to uh, be fun to be out tomorrow, too. Yeah. So, um... Beer me already took place tonight. Yep, at we the did. bar we did beer me at the bar, at uh, the bar that doesn't look much like a bar from the outside. That yeah, looks like a church from the outside. I was I was tricked. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a very big, beautiful old church, and they got a sweet ass venue in there with a full bar. It's, and it's a urban artifact. Yeah. In Cincinnati. And we both it. we both drank. It was called Finn. Uh huh. On the little menu they had up behind the bar, uh, it caught my eye. It said that it had, it had been featured in GQ magazine. It's like, well, yeah. We tried two of the GQ beers. We drank Sexy Boy beer. Yeah. And uh, they were pretty good. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. good. Timing. Yeah. yeah. No, it was really good. I liked it. I commented after uh, trying it 
that it was kind of another kind of tart, slightly uh, sour-ish. Yeah, it almost tasted like like drinking a or it almost tasted like eating a beer soaked Granny Smith apple. Yeah. It but was, it wasn't a cider. No. It just had that flavor to it. Yeah, it was very weird, but it was really good and really, really different. It's a different kind of thing. And I think, if I was reading signs correctly, I think it was like an urban artifact. I don't know about home brew, but it was like a house brew. Yeah. Like, you know, they... they signature. A signature brew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, you were able to purchase like cans of it to take home and things, mm-hmm. so I liked it. I liked that venue too. It was yep. really cool. I'd like to go back there and play sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, and while we were there, we actually we talked to Dynamite after their set, and they're gonna be guests on the show at some point coming up soon ish, yeah. whenever they can all work it out to uh, get out here and record an episode. Uh huh. And That'll tomorrow. Be Tomorrow we're going to talk to Avertooth about the same, and mm-hmm. that'll probably take a little more doing because they kind of live a little scattered. Yeah. Uh, Didn't but Andrew live in like Georgia now? I think Andrew lives in Georgia, and I want to say James lives in like Chicago or something, you know, and then like Ashley lives in Dayton, and so it's just they're kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's but, cool that they can keep it together still though because they're really good yeah they're they're so awesome so but uh you know maybe like the next time they have a Dayton show or something because normally when that happens i know at least i from what i understand like james and probably andrew now will come in early so Mm -hmm. they can uh, practice like the week leading up to the show and stuff yeah um so the next maybe the next time they have a show in the area, we we can be like, hey, you know, one of your days that like, you're here early, why don't you come on up here and mm-hmm. record with us? Now, when we were leaving and getting on on the, the highway on the way to the highway, yeah, uh, we had to travel on Beekman Road. Uh huh. And I, w- I wanted to talk more about Beekman, <laughs> but I wanted to save it for the the show here because. Yeah. When we turned on to Beekman, I asked if Bender had, uh, if he could remember Beekman's world, and he did. He remembered it as, how'd you put it? That mm-hmm. science show with the guy dressed as a rat. Yeah, and it, you thought it was kind of a Bill Nye knockoff. It was a Bill Nye knockoff. I don't think it was. <laughs> it was a Bill Nye knockoff. I never watched it. I just remember it. Really? Like, I remember the commercials for it, you know, whatever block it was on in like fox kids yeah. in the afternoon or saturday morning whatever the hell but yeah you know I, you wonder if beekman is kind of sour grapes these days because <laughs> because bill nye is like very prominent if he know? is sour grapes yeah he's, he's all sour grapes somewhere he's just <laughs> he's puckered up kind of pouty I should be the famous scientist. (laughs) Because Bill Nye, you know, he's got this BFF thing with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. You know, he's debated Ken Ham from the Creation Museum, so he's kind of a hero to the the modern atheist movement uh, to a lot of people. I think he's, you know, the hero to anyone that's not an idiot. Yeah. That believes in creationism. Yeah. You know, the whole young earth dumbasses 6,000 years old if you believe in creationism stop listening to this <laughs> podcast right now because you're a dumbass we're we're like tolerant dudes but yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna try and say the earth is only 6,000 years old that's yeah. like we're yeah we're tolerant but like science yeah you know come on because I, I I can get down with like some spirituality but I feel like it has to jive with the world that you live in, yeah. you know, you can't, can't just deny shit because you don't want to believe it. Yeah. You know, well, mm. carbon dating puts the earth at around six million, six billion years old. Nope. Mm-mm. Wrong. 
Yeah. That's not true. It's not what this book says. Like, anyways, back to Beekman. Yeah. Back to Beekman. Maybe, maybe Beekman could come at it from the other side. Yeah. And he can join forces and try and show why the Earth is only 6,000 years old. And he could uh, kind of team up with the creationists and take on Bill Nye head to head. You know, the thing about Beekman's show, though, is like it was very obviously a Bill Nye knockoff, but it was like zanier in a way. Yeah, yeah, that's and a good like, word. It was very zany. <laughs> <laughs> it was zanier than Bill Nye, but you still kind of learn something. It was one of the, it was also one of those shows that like I kind of always wanted to watch, yeah. but could never quite catch it on TV. Mm -hmm. But when I did, I was just like, oh. Well, I wish this was Bill and I, but, like, it'll do. Yeah. You know? And I just, like, I still, I can't get the image of that dude dressed as a fucking mouse <laughs> rat thing. Like, why? That blows it for you. It does. Like, what is, what is the purpose of this fucking old man just <laughs> dressed as a rat? Like. We have to watch and find out. I guess. I'm going to go home and illegally download the entire <laughs> series of Beekman's it's world. It's probably just on YouTube. Probably. I doubt you even have to go through downloading it. I still want to live dangerously. Okay. Download <laughs> it. Uh, Down find it on... Find a torrent. Yeah. Download the entire Beekman's world series. <laughs> oh, God. What if you became a huge fan? You know, <laughs> like... You're like scouring the internet for like Beekman's World yeah. t-shirts and merch. You like force me to delete this episode. <laughs> you can't can't stomach the idea of the things you've said about Beekman. Well, I don't like I, like I, I'm not. It's weird, or it's 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 weird because like I don't hate it, and I would have watched it, but I just like always would have watched it in with with the thought in mind that like it's not as good as Bill Nye. But, like, it's still a weird science show. And when I was little, I thought science was cool. I never thought it was cool enough to, like, actually study it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> but science was just sort of, like, an interesting subject. Well, it was, like, experiments yeah, and mixing and it was things, things and, and volcanoes. Yeah, and... it was, like, science was always the one subject in school that I was, like, really interested in, but it was really hard, so I was yeah. like, this is fun, but I'm not gonna try <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... I didn't like chemistry. That bugged me. I might have taken chemistry once and it was just like fucking terrible i didn't like filling out the lab reports and all that shit and uh, yeah no I, I was bad at school i was bad at all school pretty much i think i do, like english i do much better now because i'm more interested in things and i can i could jive with it but back then no thanks yeah i was doodling on my worksheets and yep i spent yeah. like a whole math class just like drawing one time <laughs> Um, so Beekman, if you're listening, yeah, uh, email us, <laughs> let, let us, us know how you're doing. <laughs> We're worried about you. Yeah. We, we hope you're not just like living in squalor yeah. because you lost all your fortune from Beekman's world or, you know, you're just bitter. You're just sour grapes that yeah. Bill and I gets all the credit don't be sour grapes, man. Don't be sour grapes, man. We love you, Beekman. It's okay. You have a spot. You have a home here on yeah. the Supercast. Yeah. If you want to do a weekly Beekman's World on the Supercast. We can call it Beekman's Super Science <laughs> Segment. <laughs> bring the rat. Yeah, bring him. We want to know how he's doing, too. Uh, well, speaking of... Super science segments. Do you want to segue into super scary? Sure. Let's <laughs> sure. segue. <laughs> this so. week we are going to be discussing Jason X. Because it's Friday the 13th right now as you're listening to this. It is Friday the 13th. It actually it's is. after midnight. Yeah. After midnight. Jason X. Probably my favorite Friday the 13th film. <laughs> I mean, 
Like, I just watched it again today for probably the first time since I rented it in, like, <laughs> 2002, whenever. Yeah. 2001, I think, is when it came out, actually. But I did not see it in theaters. I did rent it. So 2002 is probably accurate. It's probably when I watched it. Yeah. And I have not watched it uh, since until earlier today. And I and... will not watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> like, um... Hmm. Why do you like it so much? It's so awesome. It's just like I've watched I've I've watched all of the Friday the 13th movies. Yeah. And I've seen and uh well, I'm going to cut you off real quick. Yeah. Just very quick synopsis. Uh-huh. In, in case you're not familiar with Jason X, here's the plot. It's in space. It's in space. <laughs> It's Jason in space. It's so awesome. It's Jason on a spaceship. <laughs> but he gets cryogenically frozen in the first five minutes of the film after he kills David Cronenberg. Yeah. <laughs> and so he gets cryogenically frozen, and then 455 years later, some college students, of course, who are on expedition to the dead Earth, find him, take him aboard their ship, thaw him out, and he kills everybody. I want to know why there was, like, this top-secret research facility in Crystal Lake. Yeah, the Crystal Lake... Re well, it's because they captured Jason. So they built an entire underground complex just to house Jason Voorhees. Yeah. I feel like that's a little cumbersome. Like, wouldn't you have just frozen him and transported him somewhere? Like I don't... Yeah, no, that is true. Like... They were, like, holding him, but then they planned on freezing him. And it's like, why are you planning? Just freeze him. Yeah. It I, obviously worked. And I don't know how he gets out in the beginning. Well, after he's, because uh, he's chained up and everything. Yeah, he's, like, perfectly chained up. And obviously he's been chained up for a while. Yeah. Because they had enough time to have, like, military dudes fly in, probably from Washington, D.C. Well, they talk about trying to kill him, like, eight different times. Yeah. So they've been able to keep track of him for... Quite a while, I would assume. Yeah. If they've tried killing him all these different times and it doesn't work. And then, of course, you know, just somehow through Jason magic. This is the day. He escapes. You wouldn't have a movie if he didn't escape. Well, I know. I'm just saying, like, something could have happened because nothing happens. The, the guy who's watching him, the, you've got to imagine, it's like a big kind of uh just like empty warehouse looking yeah type of room it's nothing there's just nothing in there and there's jason and he's like chained up uh-huh and kind of kind of just on display yeah in the middle of this warehouse this empty warehouse and it's dark like and it always dark, is like for no reason except for the one light shining on, on jason. jason like so you could see him there's no reason for it to be so dark in this yeah. warehouse but it is and then there's there's the little desk where the guy, the watchman, is standing. Uh-huh. And he gets creeped out by Jason looking at him, so he, like, throws a blanket over top of him. Yeah. Maybe it was a magic trick. He throws the blanket on him, and then Jason disappears. Maybe that's and... just, like, I don't know, maybe the blanket is just, like, that That was finally his opportunity to, uh make an entrance because Jason needs to make a show of it. So like when they put the blanket over his head, he was like, sweet, I'm going to kill this guy, put the blanket on him. And then like when they come in and pull the blanket down, I'm going to appear and I'm going to rewrite right? the beginning real quick. Yeah. And it's going to be much better. Okay. So it's the same setup, uh -huh. but instead of the scaredy cat kid working the desk, or maybe that guy's there uh -huh. and then his relief comes in and it's like this fucking macho military dude. And he's like, get the hell out of here, you fucking pussy. <laughs> and the guy leaves and then, like, closes the door behind him. Yeah. You know, and it's a big deal. You hear the reverberation, the echo in this warehouse. And then it's just this military guy. And, and he's staring at Jason. You, you looking at me, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you something. And like, he unchains him he to unchains challenge him. him. Yeah. To challenge him. To challenge him to a fight, and then... And he just fucking dies right yeah, away. Like right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what about what about Cronenberg and everything? Then he come in with the whole 
open the door and yeah, then Jason's they, just missing and then same same old same and old. And then he just kills everyone anyway. But at least at least his escape is like it's not one a of those because I I think the escape is an important part. Yeah. Because you want to you want to have that moment where you're like, "Oh, you fucking don't don't let him out." You yeah. really think you're going to kill this guy and then yes. Then he gets handled very easily and right. You have your movie. I wonder why they did it that way. I really do. I don't know. I don't know why I care so much about this, but but of course it it, it gets way better once they get into space. Yeah. Like, so so yeah. So these college students and their professor, you know, find uh, Jason and the one chick that he stabbed through the cryopod. Yeah, like, like, like through um, like five inches of sheet metal. With an old rusty machete, machete. <laughs> that he's probably had since 1980, just pokes it through and gets her in the abdomen. So the the students take the two bodies back up to into space in their spaceships, and uh, they like have these. They have nanobots, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the podcast, but we've talked about how nanobots are going to keep us alive one day. So they put the chick on on the bed and they nanobot her back to life. They're actually ants. There's some weird kind of ant. They're all silver though. I thought yeah. they were robotic ants. They are. They're but they I think they either call them ants. They just call or them they, ants. Okay. But they're like nanobots. Yeah. Yeah. They could have called them nants. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. Yeah. We're smarter in twenty seventeen. <laughs> But, uh, so they bring the chick back to life, and of course she's just like, you know, where's Jason and everything, and they're like, oh no, he's here, he's fine, he's still frozen, Mm -hmm. even though he's thawing, like, the entire time, and then she starts freaking out, and they're like, no, it's cool, also the doctor wants to keep Jason because he's worth money, and And he's gonna sell him on the black market. He's gonna sell the most notorious serial killer on the black market. Yeah. I like the guy that he calls, mm-hmm. uh, who like wakes up in bed and he just has a he like has a mild lisp, mm-hmm. like he's missing like his two front teeth, isn't he? I probably I he's he's missing some teeth, and he's just like that's not Jason for <laughs> Jason Voorhees. He killed like two hundred something people. Like, why would it have been him? Yeah, like, why him? Why not? That's just the name that came to mind. <laughs> it's like... Uh, uh, and then... So... I mean, it's a bare-bones plot, which is why I love it. Uh, basically, t- two or three couples out of the dozen or so people on the ship start banging and that's what brings jason back to life yeah did you notice Mm -hmm. those two chick those that chick and that dude are like getting it on and then jason sits up yeah from 455 (laughs) years of cryostasis he's just like having sex in here (laughs) someone's doing it they gotta die and then he just he kills the the chick that's in the room with him, which I thought is a is a great kill, I think. Mm-hmm. And then he hunts down the people having sex, kills them next. It's kind of funny that the entire story of Jason Voorhees is just like he's butt hurt <laughs> that he drowned while people were doing it. Yeah, and he's never gotten over it. In yeah, four hundred fifty years of killing people, never the wound is still just as fresh as the day it happened. Yeah, he just can't deal. Yep, can't deal with it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, literally, literally, the rest of the movie is just different scenarios with just so many unnamed crew members and... The dude from 300. Oh, The guy uh, who gets kicked into the pit. Yeah, yeah. He's also in um, Spartacus. He mm. played a big, big role in Spartacus. I never watched The TV that, show. So. It's a fucking... You like 300 even a little bit, mm-hmm. you'll love Spartacus more than 300. Mm. Because it's like, it's like all of the violence, way more gore, and like way more dicks. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's on stars, so there's tons of nudity. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But, yeah, it's just like, Jason X is just a shit show of characters that don't matter just getting killed. And then eventually they, like, kind of, ha- they, like, try to get off the ship that they're on and shit goes crazy, but also there's a robot. Yeah. KM. Mm-hmm. My, f- I love, I, I love, but also really hate when the one, when the dude, I don't, I can't remember his name because it's some dumbass futuristic name. But the dude that's building and, like, programming KM Mm -hmm. gives her that combat upgrade. Yeah. And she comes walking in dressed like Mila Jovovich (laughs) in Resident Evil. And she's just like, I'm going to have to hurt you now. Yeah. Shut up. (laughs) Like, the writing is so bad. I just wish, like, why wouldn't you have done that in the first place? Uh, Yeah, they just, like, run around scared. Yeah. Oh, But you're right, but, like, even before... Like, it's not like she can't be super smart and also have combat training. Yeah. yeah. Like, they probably could have stopped things a while ago. After a bunch of people died, then he thought to himself, wait, I have this android that, that I has can... superhuman strength, and I can program it to have awesome reflexes and do cartwheels down a hallway... And then kick Jason Voorhees in the face. <laughs> and missed opportunity. I just love... And then I love when, like, Jason punches her in the face and he's about to, like, chop her into pieces and the the guy from 300 jumps up and stabs him. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, I had it under control, but thanks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's terrible performance. Yeah. Not one to watch for the acting. No, not even a little bit. All the girls are just like dressed like sluts the whole time. Even it's and that's just like they just chalk it up to like future clothing. Yeah. They're yeah. students, but they just like all of their midriffs are bared mm-hmm. and one chick kinda has her boobs out the whole time. I think the best part of the movie is, is the Crystal Lake simulation. Yeah. Oh yeah. By far. I yeah. mean, just him beating a camper in a sleeping bag with another camper in a yeah. sleeping bag. <laughs> when the simulation starts up, it's just like, hey, do you want to get drunk? How about we smoke some weed? <laughs> or we could just have premarital sex. Yeah. Like, Everything he hates. Yeah, those three things. Drinking yeah. weed and premarital sex. So it's, um, I mean, it's definitely not a serious entry into the Jason franchise. No, but... It's tongue-in-cheek, very much so. I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I love it. I love how campy it is. I think part of it has to do with, like, I love space horror, and mm-hmm. I mean... You can hardly qualify it as space horror. Yeah. But just the simple fact that it takes place in space, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Because, and, and you know, I think it's like, there's an appeal there because there's always that running joke, you know, uh, I don't know, anytime somebody makes like a fake trailer or something, mm-hmm. or a fake sequel, it's always blah, 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 in space. Yeah. So then you actually get Jason Mm -hmm. in space. So it's kind of like a, it's like a guilty pleasure payoff there. Leprechaun went to space. I haven't seen Leprechaun. I've only seen the first one. I haven't Mm -hmm. watched any other ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd I'd watch it again just for fun. It's super fun. It's more fun to watch than other Friday the 13th movies. It'd be fun to watch with a group, too. I think it's one of those. There's a lot you could poke fun at. You yeah. Know. Like the end when Jason becomes a meteor in his life. Yeah. And the dude is just on his back, on his like, back. punching him. It looked like they're blasting off. Like, <laughs> it's it's so very good. unintentionally triumphant, you know? Yeah. Like, they've become best friends. <laughs> they're going to travel the galaxy together. 
yeah. I love when Jason is like floating through space towards their you know escape ship and he's yeah. just like and they're like he's coming this way and they're like are you fucking kidding me yeah. and then it's just like yeah like, it's like Looney Tunes him. yeah it is like Looney Tunes yeah it's not scary at all oh no it's not, not even scary a little bit. about this movie so. Metal Jason is rad looking that is I cool think. um that actually made me think of like um and I mean this in an endearing way it made me think of like a villain you'd see on Power Rangers. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. one of the cool ones. Yeah. That kind of thing. You could totally see him getting, you know, the magna beam shot down oh, and rose and getting to the bigger. size of yeah. the city, you know, it'd be Yeah, he has that co- kind of cool uh, not really futuristic, but it's it's, you know, he gets uh he gets reanimated by the Nance. Yeah, and they use... They can't find enough of his body to just repair his body, so they, like, fan out and find whatever the fuck they can find, and of course they find, like, metal armor yeah. and stuff instead of, like, so anything else, because they're on a spaceship. Yeah. So he comes back as, like, this robo-Jason. Yeah. And it's amazing. So that's, yeah. Again, it's not... If you're a fan of, you know, the suspense and intrigue of the original Friday the 13th, it's nothing like that. I think, uh, yeah. I think that's another thing is, like, much like the Friday the 13th remake, like the 2013 or whatever year it was, mm -hmm. I think Jason X sets out to do and then achieve exactly what it sets out to do, which is to just be a Jason slasher film. Mm -hmm. I mean, the remake had, you know, a little bit of substance with that whole, like Jason kidnaps the guy's sister and everything, Mm -hmm. but the false opening and then like the actual movie. And it's still just like kids go and party Mm -hmm. and then get killed. Yeah. But it, but it works as a movie you know, so I think that's part of the reason I love Jason X is it's just like, hey, we're going to make a slasher movie and it's going to be in space mm-hmm. and that's it. And that that's what they did. Yeah. There's nothing to it. There's no substance at all. Yeah. So worth checking out if you haven't seen it. Yeah. And watch, maybe if you have. Watch well, Jason X. Watch it's it better again. than it's, it's Jason fun. Takes Manhattan. I think. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't like that one. Yeah, it's... Take it or leave it. The only thing I remember from that one is, like, the... They're, they're like, kids on a boat for a little bit, mm-hmm. I think. And he kills, like, this punk rock chick. I always remember the fight scene on top of the building where the guy's, like, boxing him. And he punches his head off? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one's... That one's not. That one's not good. So. Yeah, that's that's that. Um, in other news, uh, we got the Nintendo Switch. Big reveal tonight. Yes, we uh, did. Big press conference deal. So, are you sold on it? Uh huh. I mean, I think I was sold on it at the first like. They, you know, they put out, like, that three-minute trailer where they didn't even show, like, any real gameplay. It yeah. was just, like, this is what you can do with it. Mm-hmm. I think I was sold then, but, I mean, I I myself ha- didn't really watch. I didn't watch the presentation because you were watching while we were driving home. Yeah. Uh, but... I, I'm definitely going to watch it. We we might be able to talk about it a little more in depth, like next cast. Yeah. But uh, I'm no, I'm pretty sold. I I've been pretty sold on it. Cool that you're getting Zelda as a launch title. That's yeah. pretty neat. And then a new Mario game. Mm-hmm. In the holidays. That sounds really cool. Yeah. I'm a you know for for as little as a game of a gamer as I am. Uh, I never beat Mario 64 because, I mean, I haven't played it in a long, long time. 
Mm-hmm. But I was pretty young when I was playing it. Still got pretty far, though. I probably beat at least second Bowser. Yeah. You know, which is, I feel like, impressive for uh, a child. Yeah. Um, and I beat Mario Sunshine. And just those two games, there's something about them... Like no matter how frustrated I get, like mm-hmm. I keep, I keep, I kept trying at Mario Sunshine. It uh-huh. took me like over a year to beat it, but I did it. You know, collected all the fucking stars and yeah. got to Bowser and beat Bowser and everything. Uh, they're just really well crafted games. I think. I think this new one will be like that. So I hope so. It looks pretty cool. Uh, oh, what else? I don't really have anything comic-wise to talk about because I still need to get, get caught up. Get caught up. I'm going. I'm probably going to go buy some tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, next time. Well, next next podcast next week is finally. We're we're a little late, but it's finally going to be our 2016 top 10 yeah. wrap up. Uh, Jason is going to come down here on Saturday, right? Yeah, and uh, we're going to record with him. We've been waiting on, we've been trying to coordinate with Jason, and that's what's kind of pushed things back yeah, here he, and there. He lives in Columbus, so it's a little difficult, but but we're doing it at least in January. Yeah. <laughs> So next cast will be that, but maybe the one after that we should be definitely prepared for some super fanatics talk. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think the super sleepy cast is nearing its end. Yeah, we knew this was gonna be a short cast when we started it. Yeah. Uh just we just are old and had a long day. <laughs> That's all. Well, I, I don't know what time you woke up. I got up at 9. Okay. I got up at 6. Yeah, see? So, ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that's it's a good day's, good day's work. Yeah, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. So, um, yeah. Uh, stick around here. We'll wrap it up. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Another one down bites the hatch. Uh, another, another one bites, bites dust. dust. <laughs> um, another one down the hatch would have been an interesting song. Doom, doom, doom. Another, another one, one down, down the hatch. hatch. <laughs> I just, all I picture is a dude just like eating hard boiled eggs whole. <laughs> just like, another one down the hatch. <laughs> like, one after another. For some reason, I pictured a giant. Like picking up people and eating. Yeah, them. that too. Yeah, just that too. All... I went to hard boiled eggs, so oh. I don't know where that comes Here's from. Here's a little more PG. I don't even like hard boiled <laughs> eggs. Um, yeah, we're gonna get you guys out of here. We're gonna get out of here. Yeah, I'm gonna go home and go to bed. Uh, get in touch with us. Follow our exploits and our adventures all across the internet. Uh, facebook.com slash super divorce um, instagram at super divorce band twitter at super divorce and snapchat, snapchat at super, super divorce. divorce refer to the intro for our personal followings mm-hmm. um, which we are very active on yep mine and, uh, are all very easy just nicholas villars yeah pretty you much can, listen to the intro for mine because they're difficult it's fine um and and then the email the email so if you email divorce club at superdivorceme.com and put to sweet me in the subject line and your shipping address in the body of the email with another message or you know praise for how awesome we are uh you will be entered to win the too sweet mix a mixed CD of songs curated by both of us. We're switching weeks. 
and uh, all you gotta do is send us one email and you'll be entered for every drawing. Yep. And then we'll send you the CD if you win for free. So this week, uh, you're winning my CD. The first one, uh, Super Divorce 2 Sweet Mix Volume 2. Could be yours. All it costs you is the time it takes to send that email. I'm just going to title all of my mixes with my Twitter handle so people follow me. (laughs) It's going to be Volume 2, Bender If You Nasty. That's a good idea. Um, that's it. That's it. We'll see you next week for our 2016 Top 10 Album Year in Review. It'll be a good one. With Jason Vanover. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Super Divorce.